Hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, Lighthouse Christian Center. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord so we can give our God our praise. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord as we worship. If you're able to stand, you can stand. You can stand. You need to sit, that's fine as well. Let's give praise to our God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise the Lord, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. God, we honor you, we bless you. Your holy name, we sing praises unto you, O God. Hallelujah, we worship you today. We magnify your holy name. Let's worship again. If you know the song, sing it with me. Sing. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for oh, your name is great and great. Sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Let's sing together and concert together. I sing praise. I sing praises to your name. We love you today. Yeah. Oh Lord. Praises to your name. We praise your name. Oh Lord, come on, for your name is great. For your name is great. And great be to be praised. Sing it, I can praise us. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord, praises to your name. We bless your name. Oh Lord, come on, for your name is great. For your name is great and great to be praised. We bless your name. Come on, say it again. I sing praises to your name. We praise you, Lord. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. For your name is great and great. Sing praises, I will sing praises, I will 
Sing praises, praises unto you. Hallelujah. I will sing praise. Take a little high. I will, yeah. Sing praises. I will sing praises, praises unto you. You bless your name. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. I will sing praises, praises unto you. I will sing praises. I will sing praise over oh, you, Lord. Yes, Lord, sing praises, praises unto you. I will sing praises. I will sing praises. I will sing praises, praises unto you. I will sing praises. I will sing. We glorify your I will sing praises, I will sing praises, I will sing praises, praises unto you. I will sing praises, I will sing praises, I will sing praises, praises unto you. I will sing praises, I will sing praises, I will Sing praises, praises unto you. Yes, Lord, I will sing praises. I will sing praises. I will sing praises, praises unto you. I will sing from the depths of my soul, from the bottom of my heart. Yes, we do. Praises unto you. Sing praises. I will sing praises. Sing praises, I will 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 sing praises. I will sing praises, 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 I will I will sing praises. I will sing praises. Praise. Sing praises. I will sing praises. Unto you. Let's give the Lord some praise in this place. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. How many of you know we serve a holy God? He's holy. The Bible says that angels surround the throne of God, crying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Was, is, and is to come. God, we bless you. We declare that you are holy. You said, Be holy, for I am holy, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy is our God. Holy is the Lord of Lords. Holy, 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 holy is our God, holy is the Lord of Lords. Holy, 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 holy is our God, we love you. Holy is the Lord of Lords. Come on, let's declare he's holy. Holy, holy, holy. 
holy is holy is the Lord. Oh, you are the Lord. You are the Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are my everything. So I give myself to you. Come on, say that you are the Lord of Lords. You are the Lord of Lords. You are. You are the King of Kings. You're my everything. You are my everything. So I give myself to you. Oh, let's put worthy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy is my God. Worthy is my Lord. Worthy, 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 worthy. Worthy is my God. How many of y'all can read that today? Worthy is my Lord.
it's going to be the eighth month. Can you believe it? 2022, uh, we're, we're in the third quarter, uh, just about there. Not quite there, but we're at the end of, uh, well, we're at the end of the third quarter, getting ready to eventually get into the fourth quarter. And so the year just blown by, a lot of things going on in our world, a lot of changes, a lot of adjustments that we've had to make. We've had to navigate through a lot, but we thank God that we're here. We thank God that we're alive. We thank God that we're in the land of the living. And we thank God that Jesus is alive. He's still on the throne. And we thank him that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter what happens in our world, no matter what happens in our culture, we know God and his word never changes. And how many of you know that is good news? And so we bless God for his faithfulness, his mercy, his kindness, his unfailing love. And that's why we're here today in response to how God good, how God, how good God is to us. All right, many of these announcements you know about, free CD, uh, Zoom Bible studies, Tuesday, 7 p.m. Uh, online, or you can view on Facebook. We've been having some awesome times in our small group Bible study, 7 p.m. Thursday. It's been it's been wonderful. I, I thoroughly and my God, I might just come and listen next time. So it's been that great awesome discussions that we talk about some things that you know are happening in our world as it relates to having the biblical worldview and as a reminder if you have not already viewed it online we have hard copies of our new uh, church newsletter on the back table as well so pick one up feel free to pick one up before you leave i know sister mixon she used to put together our teen newsletter and so we decided to just make it into a church newsletter so we'll try to keep that going. We, we're planning to keep that going every month to give you some insight on what's happening in the ministry, what's going to happen in the very near future as well. All right, our last um, week, we're celebrating our June birthdays. Again, praise God for Brother Mark and Nayland in Washington. Thank God for them. And uh, I believe that is it. As a reminder, thank you, Brother Swinton, for next Sunday, we will have Children's Church. Every child will participate if you would like them to on the second Sunday of the month. So we have two more weeks and our kids will be re-engaged into Children's Church. Let me give you a scripture here. And thank you for those who uh, will first be welcome our online audience as well. Thank you for those who may be viewing by way of Facebook, those who may be view after the fact on YouTube. Thank you for connecting with us. Also, before we give, thank you for those who have already given. I mean, sometimes we get notifications and and, and we thank God that your gifts have already started pouring in this morning. So we thank God for those who uh, who not only connect with us virtually, but also those who opt to give in person, which is perfectly fine, but those who also give online. We have some folks who have not made it out, but they have, have given online, and it's a, a blessing. We couldn't do anything without the finances and the resources. So thank you for those who may be viewing who have already given this morning uh, for today's service. God bless you uh, for your generous Love gift. Let me read a verse out of Philippians chapter 4, verse number, I started verse number 15. He says, Now you Philippians know that at the beginning of the gospel, when I departed to Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving. And obviously, this is the Apostle Paul writing to the church of, Thess to a church of Philippi. He said, For even in Thessalonica, you said, Aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Verse 19, we all love this verse, but how many of you know his response to what is in verses 15 through 18? He says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we know that as we give to the Lord, God will in turn supply our needs as well. Well, all right, if you need an offering envelope, you can raise your hand and we can provide one for you. We'll sing very briefly and then we will come back and pray with you thereafter. Amen. Supply every one of my needs. 
the blessing from the Lord be on you. Let's sing one more time. By grace, by grace, through faith, I'm able to receive all that I need. By grace, through faith, the blessings of the Lord be on you. The blessings of the Lord be more to me when I put my faith and my trust in Thee. Will supply every one of my needs. The blessings of the Lord be more to me. Are mine, are mine. The blessings of the Lord be all mine, are mine, are mine. The blessings of the Lord be on mine, on mine, on mine. The blessings of the Lord be on mine. I will give with a merry heart, anointed for maker. I shall do my part. Cheerfully I give unto Thee, for there is a store out. It's for me, oh my, oh my, yeah, 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 the blessings of the Lord, they are mine, oh my, oh my, the blessings of the Lord, they are mine. Amen. The rest of your people go to the Lord's prayer. Hallelujah. And Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity to give so and to invest into the Great Commission. We thank you for those who have given, those who have sold into this ministry. We thank you, Lord, for the work you have entrusted us with, and you've allowed us to be co-laborers together with you in this Great Commission. And so, God, for that, we give you praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's sing one more special musical selection. Praise the Lord. They got me working hard today, so y'all pray with us, as they say. <laughs> Those who know the word of prayer, pray our strength in the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But how many of you know we, we serve a God who is a way maker as well? God will make a way where there is no way. Bless his name. Strong enough to pick us up and 
Father, once again, we thank you and bless you for this opportunity and privilege to share your word this morning. Lord, we declare you are the King of kings, you are the Lord of lords, we thank you so much. It is a, it's a privilege to come and be in your presence, it's a privilege to be in your house. 
privilege to be alive in the land of the living. We thank you, Father, for your mercy, your kindness, your graciousness toward us. Thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for being our Redeemer, our soon coming King. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you afforded us that we have realized in our own lives. We echo the same sentiments that you've made away. And that's the only reason why we're standing here. Now, God, I pray you think through my mind, speak through my mouth, that those who are here won't hear a word from me, but they will hear a word from you. And so, God, we give you praise, we give you the honor, and we give you all the glory for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right, so we're in Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. And as you know, we've been uh, teaching over the last weeks about praise. I, I'm so excited about this series. Um, honestly, when I decided to uh, feel that, I guess you could say, to touch on this, um, I was like, you know, how, you know, can I do five weeks and Bible studies on praise? And the more I got into it, I, I, I saw how much was in the Word of God about the importance of praising God and how this should be a part of our everyday lives, how it benefits us, how it causes things to happen. Uh, turn it down a little bit. please. In our, our everyday world and how God is pleased when we give him praise. And so in Isaiah chapter 43, verse number 21, our text scripture and it reads this way out of the New King James Version. It says, this people I have formed for myself, they shall endure my praise. Let me read this again. It says, this people, obviously he's talking about us, the people of God. I have formed for myself. And so we're made for God. We have to understand that. We're not made to live a self-life. We're made to live a life that's pleasing to God. How many of you know we were created for God's glory? And so therefore, praise should be built in our spiritual DNA. This is something that should be commonplace. This is something that should be natural. It should be innate because this serves our purpose. The Bible says that God made him for himself. He didn't make us for our own pleasure per se. And there's nothing wrong with that. But primarily, when you look at the foundation of creation, when you look at God's original intent, we've all been created for God. We've been created to give him glory. We've been created to give him praise. And so he says, my people who I have to call for myself, they shall, or I can say they should declare my praise. David said everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Praise is a heavenly mandate from Almighty God. This is not something we should be pushed or, or prompted to do. This should be natural for every believer. And so God says he's deserving and worthy of our praise. And we see Isaiah documents this fact. And so, you know, we've been on the series, as I said, for the last couple of weeks. And, and let me say this, you know, praising God has always been a part of my life and a part of my upbringing. Many of you don't know, my, my father and my grandfather, they sang in a gospel group. Um, they, even, they even cut an album. And so I remember growing up where they would practice at our home and, and I would hear them, you know, they weren't, they weren't, Singing James Brown, they, 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 were, they, were, they were singing to the Lord. They were singing, and it was about my brother, my, my father, rather, and his, uh, my uncle, and then a couple other gentlemen were in the group. And so they would practice in our home, and at an early age, I would hear them praising God. At an early age, I would hear them singing glory and praise to our God. And so I saw this growing up. My uncle was the lead singer. He was a beautiful musician. Some of you know he not only sang, but he played the piano. God anointed him. God taught him to play. He never learned how to read music. But when you listen to him sing, when you listen to him play, you can never tell the difference. He played by ear. He played by his heart. And so seeing that had an impression upon me. And I learned at an early age about the significance of praising God. Here at LCC, sometimes I'm leading praise and worship. And so praising God is very important to me. I love coming together in corporate praise. I love coming together and lifting up my voice. I love giving God glory through song. I love the atmosphere that I sense every time we come together to lift up our voices together to our God.
And so therefore, we see praise all throughout scripture, and I've seen it in my personal life as well. Now, we talk about different types of praise. I want to talk more at length about corporate praise. We talked about the benefit of praising God personally. We talked about praising God lavishly. We said we should praise God because he's our king. We should praise God because of his excellent greatness. We should praise God in song and with musical instruments. And we said there's great significance to praising God corporately. And we said corporate praise is praising God collectively. With other believers of like precious faith. It means praising God with others. Group praise. Now when I also use the term corporate praise. I'm also referring to our church services. When we come together and assemble to praise our God. That's corporate praise as well. And so I want to talk about some of the reasons why we should praise God this way. Now if you grew up in a Christian family. Christian household, you were you were drunk at church like me. Sometimes when you go to church, you would ask your parents, you know, do we have to go to church today? <laughs> I mean, do we have to go to church today? And uh, sometimes you may get an answer, uh, and sometimes you may not. Like I said, if you were drunk at church. And sometimes, especially if you had old school parents, they would tell you, you got to go to church just because I said so. But I want to attempt to give you some other reasons why we should come together corporately to praise God. A reason to justify us rolling out of bed. Reason for pressing our way together when we know we can praise God personally. But I want us to see the biblical value, the significance, the, the, the potency, if you will, of praising God corporately. And so when we look about, look at why we should do this and some other scriptural reasons, I want to first start off with the fact that we should praise God corporately, hear me now, because when we come together to praise our God, it puts us in an atmosphere of faith. And how many of you know as believers, we all need to be in an atmosphere and an environment of faith. Now here's the thing, all throughout the week we are in an environment of unbelief, an environment of doubt, an environment of secularism. We're going through spaces where people are telling us to ignore God. We're going through spaces where people don't have any faith in God. Where we're mingling and working and, and fellowshipping and around people who have no heart for God. And so this can influence you throughout the week. And obviously we know how important our faith walk is. The Bible says the trial of our faith is much more precious than gold. It's better than the Powerball. Come on now. The Bible says it's more precious than gold. It's the most valuable thing we have. It's the only way we can have a relationship with God. It's the only way we can pray and receive and expect an answer from God. It's the only way for us to know God. And oh, by the way, He is an invisible God, but He's very real. And so therefore, because He has asked us to make faith a priority, we have to come together corporately because it puts us in an environment of faith. It puts us in a realm where we can recharge our faith. And how many of you know every once in a while your faith needs to be recharged? Faith is important. Faith is critical. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it's impossible to pray and talk and to communicate with God. Without faith it's impossible to make God proud. The Bible says those who are saved, those who have been declared righteous, should live by faith. Faith is the lifestyle for every child of God. And so therefore, we come together corporately to be in an environment of faith, to have our faith recharged. Because sometimes, because of stress, because of life, because of challenges, because of circumstances, it will rob you of your faith. You go through issues, you go through persecution, you experience death and the loss of a loved one, you go through financial hardship, and it, it, it takes a toll on your faith. Not to mention the Bible says that the enemy comes against us any opportunity that he has. He puts thoughts in our mind that God isn't real. God is going to help you. God hasn't heard or answered your prayer. God is not watching out for you. He's not a way maker. He came for you before, but he's not going to come through for you today. And so therefore, because of that, because we don't want doubt to seep in, we have to put ourselves in an atmosphere of faith so our faith can remain strong. And let me tell you this, never in my life have I seen so many people bold about the fact that they do not believe in God. Never in my life. You see it on social media, when I was in the public school system, they were bold. Oh yeah, I'm an atheist. They will tell you when they're not even bad an eye. Yes, I'm agnostic. I don't believe in God. I don't go to church. And so as Christians, we're around that through seven days, six days out of the week. We're around that constantly. 
Hour upon hour, we're around people who have no idea who God is and don't have a desire to know who he is. And so therefore, if we're not careful, it can definitely negatively impact your faith. And so God said, come together and praise me corporately to be in an environment of faith so your faith can be recharged. It's all you got. And that's why we come together. And I'd like to digress. This is why I can't stand religion. But I love the idea of being in a relationship with God. You do know this is a religion. You can have religion. You can keep religion. I'm not just here because this is what we do on Sunday morning. I'm not just here because this is just how I've been raised. I'm not just here because this is a good thing to do to, to make sure I become a good moral person, a good person of character. No, I'm here to have a relationship with a very real God who created everything. See, I, I, you can have religion. I'm all about relationship. And if I am going to develop a relationship with God, i got to grow my faith. It is not just for newcomers in Christ. Even if you've been saved for a long time, even if you're in the ministry, I have to feed my faith and starve my doubt. Or you see me on the spiritual stockpile of life, in the spiritual junkyard. If we're going to maintain a real, authentic, bona fide relationship with God, we have to, on purpose, put ourselves in an environment of faith. That's why we come together corporately. That's why God says, forsake not the assembly of yourself. That's why he tells us, don't ever stop meeting together. He says, i got to get you an environment of faith. So your faith can remain strong. Now, so many things to say here. It is amazing what God has done. You see it all throughout scripture. When he has been in an environment of faith. It means everything to God. God has always done significant things when there have been an environment of faith. Can I suggest to you, maybe that's one reason why God can't do certain things in our lives. Because we don't keep ourselves in an environment of faith. We hang around people who have no faith. We, we spend the most time with people who have no heart for God. We, 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 we make sure our closest friends, I'm talking about our inner circle, are people who have no hunger or passion for God. And it impact, impacts our lives. And so therefore, when we put ourselves in the right spiritual space, God can do wonders. Pastor, give me a scriptural reference. I'm glad you asked. The Bible says Jesus went back to his hometown. The place where he was the most familiar. And the Bible said that in his hometown, he can do no mighty work there. He can do nothing significant, no miracle. He healed a couple of folks. But the Bible says he was limited in what he could do because the Bible says there was so much unbelief. Unbelief, hear me now, it hindered the ministry of Jesus. There were, listen, there were things that Jesus, hear me now, could not do. I didn't say wouldn't. He could not do because of their unbelief. So I see why Satan fights so much against corporate praise. I see why Satan fights so much to keep us whole. I see why Satan fights the body of Christ so much on congregating together to build and develop our faith. Because there are certain things God will never do in our lives if we don't put ourselves in an environment of faith. That's why you check your company, you check your surroundings, you, you check where you go. That's why you make sure you plug yourself in to the house of God. Let me tell you, even if you're online or in person, you've got to be consistent. But you cannot afford to not develop and grow your faith. And that's why it's critical. That's why we have to have corporate praise. Now, I said corporate praise is like recharging your faith. And I'll put my hand up first. I'll go to the front of the line. Sometimes I need my faith to be recharged. Because like I said, there's this thing called life. Challenges, circumstances, pressure, stress. See, it can negatively impact your faith. And it's amazing how the natural man understands this. So we moved and we are up in the, we live in the country now. And uh, right now on the, on the highway, you see a whole lot of Teslas, right? Yep. You're going to see more electric vehicles. Yep. Oh my God, Teslas everywhere. Because where we live at now, there's a te Tesla charging station. A charging station for electric vehicles. And as I said, go on, you probably see more and more charging stations. They're they getting away from gasoline, especially this crisis, with the price is going up. They, everyone, they, everything is moving toward electric. I can imagine even the homes that they build now, they will have plug-ins in your garage. And so my point is this, every so often we see these Teslas and they're charging and they have sense to know that I can't go too far. 
because I'm going to run out of power. I'm, I'm, my battery is going to go low, so I can go for a while, but eventually I'm going to have to recharge. And so you see them sitting out there, and they're plugging in, and, and they're recharging so they can continue on their journey. And it's amazing they understand it, but the body of Christ Christians, we don't seem to understand this. You can go far, but eventually, how in the world can you keep going weeks and months at a time, never coming to church, never connecting, never doing even an online worship, listen, not doing anything? Could you? How can you? How do you think you can function? Oh, you go for a while, but eventually you're going to cut off. Your battery is going to die. In other words, spiritually speaking, you will cut yourself off from God because you got to recharge your faith. And, so, and the natural man understands us. That means as a child of God, I don't care what your role is in ministry. I don't care if you're a pastor, or archbishop, or prophet. It does not make a difference. I have to plug in through corporate praise to make sure my spiritual battery remains charged. Because the enemy is coming against us every which way. You need to have a full, listen, you need power in your life. And so therefore, how we plug in is through corporate praise. Because we're in an atmosphere of faith, we can charge our faith. And oh, by the way, the body of Christ believers, we're called the household of faith. And so that's why we have to do this. Number two, now we should praise God corporately. Somebody say corporately, corporately. Corporately because it gives us an opportunity to get into the word of God. Obviously, that should go without being said. It gives us an opportunity to learn about God, to learn about the word. It gives us an opportunity to feed on God's principles. We know the verse here, Matthew chapter 4, 4, many of you uh, have heard, memorized this. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's why we praise God corporately. It gives us an opportunity to get into the word of God because what food, hear me now, what food is to your natural body, the word of God is to our spirit. Follow me. And so therefore, it gives an opportunity. Again, I, I can't stress this enough. We're, we're not talking about religion. <laughs> See? Because if it was just religion, hear me now, if it was just religion, you can afford to miss. You can afford to not be engaged. We're not talking about religion. See, even at work, sometimes you can get an excuse and you can make up time and, and you miss a day here, you make up another day. Listen, that and I understand that, you know, but we're, we're, we're talking about something totally different. We're, we're not just talking about attendance, per se. We're talking about being able to live spiritually. Because the Bible says we live by every word. We have to feed our spirit or we will spiritually die. And so therefore, that's why we engage in corporate praise so we can get into God's word because what food is to the body, the word of God is to our spirit. And when we come together to praise God, that's why I love when people come and they, they get involved and they come early. And they, they, listen, when we engage in praise and worship, it prepares your heart to receive the word. It breaks up the fallow ground. It helps you to refocus yourself. Again, a lot of things are going on through the week, all the stress, all the worries of the bills and, and the things you have coming up, the projects, the deadlines. And so you can block all of that out, all the assignments, all the things you have coming up. Now listen, in, in, the, in the coming days, you block all that out. And so now the, the praise and worship and, and you sit into the presence of God and it begins to break up the fallow ground in your heart. So now you're in a position that you can receive God's word. And so that's why we participate in corporate praise to get into the word of God. And oh, by the way, as we come together corporately in the church, in our services, the Bible says, I've said some in the church, not at home. Okay, in the church, pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers, and evangelists, where have God sent them? In the church. And so we come together corporately to connect with these fivefold ministry gifts so we can get a hold of God's word. And so that's the significance of corporate praise. Hallelujah. We come and hear the preaching and teaching of God's word. God, Paul told Timothy one time, he said, give yourself to public reading and teaching and preaching of the word of God. And so therefore, he was encouraging people, hey, make sure you tell people to come out 
in public, not private, so you can read to them the word of God, so you can teach them and preach to them about the principles of God's word. That's the benefit of corporate prayers. Hallelujah. You know, I thought about this because they, there are parallel similarities, and even though it's not the same, there's, there's a relationship. You know, like when I was in the public school, and in the public school system, a school year is 180 days, right? And I think kids can maybe miss, so Brother Brown, you probably know this, <laughs> six days, I believe, and still get credit. But, uh, you know, every once in a while you have that one student who is egregiously absent. And, and, and then the parent wonder why the child don't know anything. Well, I mean, come on, okay? It's supposed to be at 180 days. Let's say the child makes 60 days. Where do you think your child's going to be academically? I was talking to uh, girls getting ready to go back to school and talking to some uh, folks and I think there was a family, a parent who had a child six, seven years old and the child never, never, never been to school. Said, well, COVID and all this stuff going, never been to school, never been to school at all, never. Six years old, six or seven, I believe. So you can imagine where they are academically, they're way behind. Parents are like, can you put them in kindergarten? No, they're seven years old. Come on, kindergarten. Probably where they belong. Okay, but the thing is, if the child is not in attendance, you know they're going to be way behind academically. Well, the thing is, spiritually, when we don't connect, when we don't come together corporately, when we don't attend, you can imagine how far we be we're behind spiritually. You can imagine. I can, that's why I believe Paul says, there is a time where many of you should be teachers. But now I have to teach you again the first oracles and the principles of God. Man, you should be a lot farther along, Paul said, and you walk with God. But the problem is you're not committed to corporate praise. You're not committed to coming together, assembling with your family in Christ, coming to the church, to the house of God. And so spiritually, you're years behind schedule. And we wonder why when the problems of life come knocking on our door, we don't have enough word in us to overcome. And oh, by the way, the Bible says, this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What is faith? The word of God. And so therefore, we come together to get a hold of God's word. And if we don't, we're going to put, we're going to put ourselves behind. And oh, by the way, when we come to church, if we give you all the answers, it's an open book test. I used to, when I was in public school, I used to get on kids like, I'm sorry, you know, go ahead and tell your mom and dad, I didn't, I'm, I'm going to roast you right now. How in the world can you fail an open book test? The answer's for right there. How can you fail? It's right there. I underlined the thing for you. And so when we come to the house of God, God has given us all the answers. He, he, he's, he's giving us the remedy. He's telling us what we need to do in reference to our lives. And when we come, and life hits us. We fail the test. We fail. When it comes to, to our personal life, we fail. But our career, we fail. When it comes to sharing our faith, we fail. When it comes to moral issues and character flaws, we fail. But we're not in a corporate setting to hear God's word. And some of us, we repeat the same grade two, three years. So that's why I said, no, you, you, we come together in corporate praise so we can get a hold of God's word. And sometimes you see it. People, they go from church to church, meeting to meeting, prayer line to prayer line, never get ahead, never grow, never, never mature in their faith. Don't just show up during the revival, come every Sunday. <laughs> so we can get a hold of God's word. Because when food is to the body, the word of God is to our spirit. The same way a child can't expect to be where they need to be academically. If they only attend 60 days out of 180, how can we expect to be a spiritual giant where we're not here to hear a word from God? We're not here and engage in corporate praise. We're just like that seven-year-old who's never been to school, who's behind, but is on a kindergarten level. Kindergarten level. So therefore, that's why we have to get involved in corporate praise. One more thing. And so we should praise God corporately. Somebody say corporately. Corporately. So we can glorify him in unison. Okay? In unison. 
What does the word unison mean? It means all together as one at the same time. We've talked about that. This, there's value in praising God in unison together. Not just by yourself. It's okay to praise God alone. Don't get me wrong. But there's value in praising God in unison. Now, can I tell you that as, as believers, we do need to learn how to praise God in unison. Because the body of Christ is so separated and so divided. Amen. We're so fragmented. We actually could stand to work on praising God together as a family. We fuss on this. We argue about that. We got this doctrinal disbelief and disconnect. And we got denominationalisms. And, and we, we have all kind of different nuances of the gospel. And we do things this way. And we do things the other way. We praise God quietly. We praise God loudly. You know, y'all too loud. No, y'all too quiet. Okay, we praise God with music. Some churches praise God without music, and they're adamant about it. And so we can stand to learn how to praise God in unison. I can make the argument that the world does a better job doing things in unison together more than the church. And so, therefore, it's amazing how, how we go to jobs, places of work. We have all kinds of backgrounds. We, we have different genders and we have different ideologies. We all come from different uh, families, yet we're able to work together in unison yes. on a project for a goal for the mission of the company. You look at the military, you look at sports, everybody comes from different backgrounds, different ages, different languages sometimes, and yet we can work together, but in the body of Christ, we can't come together and praise God as one. And if we don't do that, how in the world can we win the world with lost for Jesus? How in the world can we accomplish the Great Commission? And so therefore, he says, yes, there's value in corporate praise because we learn how to praise God as a family. With your brothers, with your sisters in Christ. Together, as one, in one accord. Where you can push aside all your differences. How someone got on your nerves and they sat on your Seating on your row, and, and they took your place, and, and you were going to get a seat, and someone jumped in front of you, and, 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 and you know they made you serve more than another person. And, and we, we got to put all that aside so we can praise God together as one. And so we should learn how to do this. Because again, in Scripture, tremendous things happen. We're almost done. When we learn how to praise God in unison, I want to read a verse here Acts chapter 4, verse 23. This is the story of Peter and John, and they were persecuted and put in prison. The Bible says, and being let go, they went to their own companions, King James's company. Okay, they were around their own people, people who believed like them again. We said they were in a, in, in, in a community of faith. We all need that, verse 24. So when they heard that, they get this now. Not just Peter and John, the entire group. They raised their voice to God. Together with one accord. So I want you to picture this that a group of people, they're not just, you know, silos in a, you know, off by themselves, one in this corner, other one in that corner. The Bible says together they lifted up the man, it's something about coming together and praising God corporately. It's just something about it. Praising God in unison. You know, it's kind of like, you know, uh, uh, you know, someone singing a solo, but but you know, it's one of the most beautiful things, especially if you've got a good choir director, when you see a choir and you have, you know, 20, 30 people and they're all singing in unison and harmony. It's a beautiful thing. One person sounds good, but man, you have a group of people singing together. It, it is, it's, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Kind of like when you go to a symphony or an orchestra, you, you hear them, you know, warming up before they play. But once that conductor, once, once that person gets up there, hits that and starts going like this, it's, it's beautiful music. Why? They're, they're coming together. They're all on the same sheet of music. What am I saying? The Bible says Peter and John, they were all on the same sheet of music. Together, they lifted up, they raised their voice to God in one accord and said, Lord, you are God. How many said that? All of them said it. How? In unison, as one, on one accord. The Bible said, they said, you are God. Together they said, Lord, you made heaven and earth. And all that is in them. And by the mouth of your servant David said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things and the people of the earth 
took their stand. And the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus. I'm going to show you what happens when we praise God corporately. When we praise God in unison. When we praise God together as one. And the Bible says in verse 27. You are truly the holy servant Jesus. Whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate. And the Gentiles heard and the people of Israel were getting this gathered together. Oh my God, I missed that point before. So the Bible says, notice, with the Gentiles and the Jews, those of Israel, they came together corporately. Now beforehand, they were divided. They were separated prior to the law or according to the law. But the Bible says, because of faith in Christ, now they can come and worship and praise God. What? Together, in unison. So the Bible says it wasn't just the Gentiles, but also Israel were gathered together. And he said, to do whatever your hand and purpose determined before to be done. Verse 29, now Lord, look on their threats. Grant unto your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching forth your hand. Be healed that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy child, Jesus. Get this. And when they, 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 plural, when they pray, when they praise God, when they came together in corporate praise, get this. Now I'm showing you the significance and the power behind praising God corporately in unison together as one the Bible says and when they pray the entire place where they were assembled together it started to shake see it started to shake and the Bible says as they praise God together in unison as one the Bible says they all were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. You cannot convince me that there's not power, tangible power. There's not value in praising God corporately. The Bible says they, they pushed aside all of their differences and they lifted up their voice to God in unison. And the entire place started to shake. He said, what's going on here? He said, something is happening. And the Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, those who were timid weren't timid anymore. All of a sudden, those, you know, sometimes we come to church, he said, well, I'm, I'm shy. I don't, I don't want to do anything. I'm embarrassed. No, the Bible says they stepped up to the plate with boldness. Because the power of God hit that place. They were completely changed. And my point is, it didn't happen when they were all by themselves. They came together on one accord. Get this. And their life was never the same. The Bible says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the timid ones became bold. That's the value of corporate praise. They experienced a move of God. And all of a sudden, I can remember they were saying, my God, those, those are uneducated men. How? And, and they were speaking the word of God eloquently and, and, and boldly and again beforehand they didn't want to ruffle any feathers they didn't want to intimidate they didn't want to offend anyone and again some of them probably didn't like being put into the public eye but the Bible said once they came together corporately praise God in unison their life was never the same and they spoke God's word with boldness no 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 I'm here to tell you that Jesus he is the Christ the son of the living God and I won't back down. I'm not going to change my story. The Bible says they were preaching and teaching Jesus. They were persecuted, put in prison, and they were so bold. They, they started blessing God. They said, we are found worthy to suffer shame for his name. I wear persecution being put in prison like a badge of honor. And I'm not going to change my stance. They came together. Again, they put denominational differences aside. They put theological differences aside. They put all kinds of differences aside. They cut all kinds of personality differences, differences and personality quirks and ideologies aside. No, we're going to praise God. We're going to learn to get together. By the way, we're brothers. We're sisters in Christ. We're going to praise God together as one. Well. And that's what we missed. That's what's been lacking in the body of Christ. we got all kinds of churches now. You all kind of different nuances of the gospel. You got all kind of things. And it all separates us. But he says we need to come together. And cooperate. I say this in close. Hey, you know, I, 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 it's amazing. I said this before. And wouldn't it be awesome if one day we just had a praise service in the Coliseum? Yeah. We get Baptist, Episcopal, 
Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Holiness, Church of God, Church of God in Christ. See, all these things. Wouldn't it be awesome? Word of faith, Word of God, non denominational, interdenominational, Catholic. Wouldn't it be awesome? We could just come together, put all of that aside. And just come and praise God. Could you imagine the impact it would make in the city? And could you imagine the impact it would make on people who were not saved? How they would view that? My God, they've got together. Could you imagine the impact it would make in our nation? Because now you got conservative Christians. you got liberal Christians. you got moderate Christians. I mean, my God, I thought we just Christians. And that separates us as well. But the Bible said in their day, once they push all that aside, when it pushed politics out of the church, when it pushed all these agendas out of the church, and they came together just to praise God on one accord, together as one. The Bible said they experienced a move of God, and their life was never the same. That's the value of corporate praise. And that's why he, and that's why, listen, I get it, don't get me wrong, but that's why he says, if, if, if you can't come out, don't stay home. See? If you, can, if you can make it, like the old saint would say, press your way. Because you might miss out what God is doing on a corporate level. It's like I would tell the kids. Now, again, you know, I got a little gangster in me now. But they would say, Mr. Graham, I'm, I'm not, when I was in the public school, I'm, I'm not ready for the test. I said, oh, oh really? That sounds like a you problem. Because I was here to deliver the information. I was here to give you the content. Do you have a, uh, an excuse access? No, I just, you know, I was tired that day. That's a you problem. Because I was here to deliver the lesson. I was here to give you the formula. I was here to explain the process. So now, ready or not, here I come. You want to take this step. But Mr. But Mr. Grant Method, you should have been here. Okay? But I'm going to fail. You probably will. Okay? Because you weren't here to hear what I know you needed to hear in order to pass the test. And God says the same thing. When you go out in life, you're probably going to fail. Because when you had an opportunity, if you were able, you did not go where you needed to go to get the information so you could experience a change in your life in which you would never be the same. I say it's supposed, and I tell the story, and I'll give you the all the facts. And sometimes we tell testimonies, we embellish it just to make it sound better. I'll be honest with you. I was uh, on uh, driving in the car, and I was, and again, I was just listening to a sermon on radio. So I wasn't in church at the time, although it was a corporate worship service. But it tells you the value of connecting and being in an environment of faith. There's a preacher preaching. I've had this experience before at church. And it seemed like he was talking to me. It seemed like that, that message. You, you ever been there? It seemed like that message was just me, for me. See? Can I make that, that message? I, I cannot. I, there are no words to describe how when that word was coming... How would, would bless my God I needed to hear that word. It's like the song we sing, Lord, you have rescued my life. Man, hearing that word, man, it, it again, I know there's value in corporate praise. Hey, you may not eat, but I, I need church, okay? I need church. Makes me a better man, makes me a better husband, makes me a better father, makes me a better person. I, I need it. I really do. Because I can come and meet together with an awesome God. I can come with other believers of light, precious faith. I can come with other people who won't discourage me in my faith, but who will encourage me in my faith. I can come with other people who will lift up hands like me, who praise the same. I ain't here to praise Allah, Buddha, Confucius, or, or Muhammad. No, we're coming to praise the King of Kings, the Lord of all. We're coming to praise Jesus Christ, the great I am, the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. See? And man, that, that does something for my faith and my life that nothing else can do. I tried. I tried to go to the game and get that same result. I tried to go to the fair or the carnival and get that same result. I tried to go to the concert. It doesn't do it for me. But when I come together with, with other believers, when I come to hear a word from God, it impacts my life in ways that I can't measure. 
And that is the value. That's why Satan fights so hard. And like I said, you can find so many people who will boldly say, I don't go to church anymore. Who boldly say, I don't even believe in God anymore. It'd be good for you, but it's, it's not for me. How about we get to the point where we boldly say, I'm not going to stop going to church. Amen. I'm not going to stop serving God. Hey, no, I don't believe all roads lead to God. I serve the one and true God. His name is Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed to say it. I personally believe, no due respect, no disrespect to you. I personally believe that Jesus Christ is the only way, truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through him. He is the door. He is the bridge. Not a door, but the door. How about us get, and I tell you, you're not going to be bold about it. You don't come and recharge your faith. Because throughout the week, Satan will put thoughts of doubt in your mind. He will try to allow life to put pressure on you to back you off of your relationship with God. I, mean, I don't know if this God stuff work. I don't know if God is real. I don't, I don't know if he exists. I don't, I don't think I need to. I, I'm going to back off for a while. I don't believe if God answers prayer. I don't know if he's going to come through for me this time. I don't know if the word is real. No. You have to come in an environment to recharge your faith. That will support what you already know on the inside. So you can move to a great, again, not, not Say this in close. Not so I can just be another year in church in an organized religion. No. So I can grow closer in my personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Because that is the only thing that matters. That's why we come together corporately. And that's why we praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead and rest on our feet. Go ahead and pray. Stop here. Thank you. We have believers here, but if you need prayer, we'll give you this opportunity to pray if you need prayer. God, praise. Hey, brother Swim is back. Praise God. Amen. Let's give God praise for him. Amen. <laughs> and we, we have to stay covered and uh, we have to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ as well. These are perilous times. We were talking about it before service. My God. Uh, a lot of things going on in the world. A lot of challenges. You know, COVID has become a concern. Kids getting ready to go back to school. People are traveling. People aren't sure what the next three months are going to look like, to be honest. A lot of uncertainty going on. There's a lot of questions about the economy, a lot of questions about gas prices and the, uh, the housing market. A lot of things are going on. The one thing that is great that will never change is God. And despite these changes, his word never changes. The economy changes, his word never changes. We're in a health crisis. The word still does not change. You know, the market fluctuates. God never fluctuates. He's the same. That's one thing we can hang our hat on. That's one thing we have at our disposal. And that's a benefit we have as his children. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. Thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, to understand the significance of praising you. We've, we've, been created to give you praise. Help us to never forget that. We abandon religion. We just want to have a relationship with you. Help us understand the significance. No matter where we are, we're here today, 10 years from now, help us to always understand that we need to keep ourselves in an environment of faith so our faith can survive, so we can always have a relationship with you. We have to connect ourselves so we can hear your word on a regular basis because what food is to the body, your word is to our spirit. Help us understand the, the value of praising God corporately in unison as one. That we come together and praise you, Lord. There's something 
that you do in our lives that doesn't take place anywhere else. So help us to be reminded of that no matter where we are in life. In the name of Jesus. So God, we give you praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. We lift up, Lord, our natural family. We lift up our church families right now. Those who may be struggling in their faith. Those who may be having a hard time with some of the challenges that they may be going through. Wherever they are, pray you meet them right where. Meet them at their point of desperation. Help us all, Lord, to grow into a more closer, intimate relationship with you. Want to hear you say one day, servant of God, well done. Want to please you, we just want to make you proud. Lord, help our life, help, Lord, that our lives will be an influence and make an impact in the lives of others, those who are closest to us. Help, us to, help them to see how very real you are because they see you in our lives. God, how you always honor your word to us, your children. How you always show us how faithful, how loyal you are to us, how your mercies are new every single morning. How you watch over us, how you provide for us, how you heal us, Lord, how you deliver us. How you make ways for us where we did not think there was going to be a way. How you change our lives. Make us into better men, better women. So that we're more conforming to the image of your son. So God, for that we give you the glory, we give you the honor. And we give you the praise. Jesus, thank you, pray. Hallelujah. Lord, you need you. will be blessed because of your presence in our lives, because of our willingness to obey your word. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a hand up and pray. Amen. 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 Amen.